I want to begin uh, with an issue that is now so painfully fresh in Michigan, uh, involving the way this country's relationship with guns has become so toxic. We saw the Michigan State uh, shooting recently. Uh, you and your district had that mass shooting at Oxford uh, High School last year. Uh, what do you believe the United States Senate can do uh, on this issue? What do you think is within the realm of the possible now? Yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot of things that are just basic that we could pass tomorrow um, if we were able to to do something about the filibuster. But I think the most basic things are going to happen in the state of Michigan and our legislator, legislature soon. Universal background checks for anyone buying any gun, including on the Internet and at gun shows. Um, uh, banning assault weapons. Um, red flag laws so that if a mentally ill person is, like, showing signs that they want to harm themselves or others, they can have their weapons taken away if a judge intervenes. Um, and then the one that I uh, introduced at the federal level, it's also at our state level, safe storage if you have kids under 18. If a child in your home gets access to a gun and commits a crime, the parents can be held criminally liable. These are things, whether you're a hunter, a sportsman, I can't tell you how many people I've heard from in the state of Michigan where hunting is sort of in our culture who have said, look, I'm, a, I'm an avid sportsman, but we have to do something to protect our kids. So I, I actually think Washington is the last one to get the memo on this, that the ground is changing. Um, people want to protect kids in their sanctuaries at home. And Washington is just, they could do something about tomorrow if the Senate would move and if we would just, frankly, get past this idea that a few Few members of the Senate can block progress on any sorts, any kind of bill, like any a million bills right now are sitting at the Senate. Well, let's go to that issue uh, right there, the so-called filibuster rule. I know members of the House are usually looking over at the Senate uh, complaining about those Senate rules that always seem to get in the way of the legislation that the House can pass. Would you uh, vote in the Senate to get rid of that current 60 vote uh, filibuster rule? Yeah, I think the filibuster, as it is now being used, needs to go. Um, and I think that there's, uh, I've already said, certainly on issues of democracy, right, like changing and affecting our democracy, things like voting rights, we have to be able to have an up or down vote. Um, and I'm all for going back to, like, the old school, you know, standing filibuster, talking filibuster, where if you care passionately about an issue, you can go up there, talk for 18 hours straight, delay you know, the bringing of that bill to the floor, that's like 1830s, you know, early America stuff that I'm fine with. But the idea that a couple, a handful of senators can just stop bills from even coming to the floor and getting an up or down vote, I, I just I, I just don't think that makes sense. And in the House, we have so many bipartisan bills, things that have passed with both Democrat and Republican support that don't even get an up or down vote in the Senate because of those rules. Well, at the moment, if uh, Joe Manchin wins his reelection in West Virginia and the Democrats were to hold on to control of the Senate, that would mean there'd be at least one uh, Democrat who was in favor of holding the rules as is, which is why <laughs> the Democrats are trying to elect more Democrats so that they get well above uh, the 51-52 level of Democrats so that they can they can re get rid of that rule. Because as I understand it, it's, it's, it, it's all except two Democrat current two Democratic current members of the Senate uh, who are trying to hold on to that filibuster rule. Yeah, I'm, I, again, that's what I understand from the outside, and uh, this is why elections matter, right? In Michigan, uh, we, had a, we had a really great night in November, and we flipped our House and our Senate, you know, passed things on the ballot, like codifying Roe v. Wade in our, in our state. So elections do matter. They do change things. Uh, Michigan is a battleground state, and the battle never stops, it seems. Democrats have been doing well statewide uh, recently. They've, they've been winning. Uh, but Donald Trump won Michigan in his first campaign, won it by less than 1% of the vote, but, but won it. Uh, where do you see the Michigan electorate at this point, uh, as you have to kind of tonight... Uh, in your campaign be at least mentally predicting where they're going to be two years from now? Yeah, I mean, look, you you, know, you can never predict that far out. But uh, I think what I feel like we really said very loud and clear out of Michigan in November is we just want people who are common sense, normal, like people who get things done and believe in governing. 
And I really think that a lot of people just looked at their ballots, especially in a state like Michigan, where we have a lot of independent voters and swing voters, and they said, who is the most reasonable person on each line of my ballot? And we had uh, a Republicans putting up just a bunch of really extreme candidates and who just didn't believe in who won the 2020 election and who just were playing off of all these cultural issues. And I think we heard very loud and clear from our governor's race on down that people don't want that in our state. And, um, and we see only a continuation towards the bottom of the Michigan Republican Party. They're electing extremists as their leader of the state party. So they don't seem to have learned those lessons. And I just keep thinking that to myself that if they keep putting up these candidates, we're going to keep beating them and beating them and beating them until they decide that they want to do something else. Because we desperately, I think in Michigan, people want two healthy parties, right, who have a civil discourse about the role of government in our lives. We were always a swing state. We were always a place where, you know, my dad was a Republican. My mom was a Democrat. We want that to be normal again. And But until we get that back from the Republican Party, we're going to beat them at the ballot box over and over and over again.